Let's talk Tanya for the 29th of Nisan. The conversation over the past few segments of Tanya has been about Yiras Hashem, about arriving at an awe for God. And as we said yesterday, that today we are starting chapter 43, and we will be talking about the highest level of awe that is possible. This is known in Hasidus as Yira Ilah, or the supernal level of awe. To understand this, the Alter Rebbe introduces us first a Mishnah from Pirkei Yavis. The Mishnah says, Im ein yira ein chachma, im ein chachma ein yira, which translates as, if there is no awe, there is no wisdom, and if there is no wisdom, there is no awe. Now think about that for a second. That's the ultimate catch-22. You're saying that if there is no awe of God, then one cannot arrive at wisdom. Okay, so then you need to have first awe. But then the Mishnah proceeds to say, if there is no wisdom, there is no awe. So first you need to have wisdom in order to have awe. So where do you start? So Dr. Rebbe explains that we're talking over here about two different levels of yira, two different levels of awe. First, you have to have a lower level of awe, and that allows you to arrive at wisdom. Once you've arrived at wisdom, then we can arrive at the higher level of awe, which we will be talking about today. What is this higher level of awe? So to understand this, let's give an analogy. Sometimes we meet, we meet a person, and that person, due to their impressive resume, is an awe-inspiring person. Let's say you were to meet the President of the United States. Regardless of the political party, what you think of the President, that ought to inspire an awe. When you're standing before the President, you're feeling tense, you might be trembling a little, your palms will be sweating a little, you're in awe because you're standing in front of the President of the United States. But what's causing that awe? Think about it for a second. Imagine that you were standing not in front of the President of the United States, but you're standing before um, the mayor of the city or the village of Hickville in Iowa. Would you feel an awe when you're standing in front of the mayor? The answer is probably not. And if yes, very, very minimal. Why is that? Is that because the President of the United States is essentially a more awe-inspiring figure than the mayor? The answer is no. And by the way, this president, if you're going to meet this president in five years from now, after his term has finished, also you won't be feeling the same awe. You'll be feeling some awe. You're in the presence of a former president, but it's not the same. Why isn't it the same? Because it's not the personality of the president that's inspiring the awe. It's the fact that this president... Um, he has the, you know, he can push the button and start a nuclear war. It's the fact that this president over here, the power that he wields, the fact that uh, he is the leader of the free world, the, the president of one of the biggest countries in the world, the amount of influence that person has, that is what is inspiring the awe. The mayor of Hickville might actually be a more inspiring, uh, a more awe-inspiring figure by, um, in terms of their own personality, but it's not about the personality of the person. It's not about the person at all. It's about the person's accomplishments or achievements. Contrast that, for example, with the awe that you feel when you stand in the presence of a tzaddik. Now, I remember this very clearly, standing in front of the Rebbe. And absolutely, when I stood in front of the Rebbe, I trembled. There was this incredible awe standing in front of the Rebbe. Now, if you've never stood in front of the Rebbe, imagine if today you were to meet with Moshe Rabbeinu. Imagine what you would feel like, the awe that you would feel. But over here, the awe is very different. It's not because of the accomplishments of this great tzaddik. It's not because of their sphere of influence or power. It's actually a, an awe for the essential person, the greatness of the person and the insignificance that I feel in the presence of that person. Let's carry over this analogy in talking about God. One level of awe of God, and that's actually what we've been discuss discussing in the past um, chapter, is I look around at the world. I see how incredible God is. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created everything. He, um, everything that happens, he's busy managing and controlling the wisdom, the greatness, the power. But is that really in awe of the essence of God? Or am I being impressed by his accomplishments, his actions, his creations, his sphere of influence? The Alter Rebbe writes elsewhere, you know, people make the mistake of thinking that God is defined by his creation. To paraphrase what the Alter Rebbe says, if God were to write a resume, creation wouldn't even be on it. That's how insignificant it is for God. 
So if, I, if the all that I have of God is only a result of looking around the world and looking at creation, even if not only looking at this world, even if I'm also contemplating the higher worlds, ultimately, I am not capturing God himself. And ultimately, the world and creation is what's important, but God himself, I have no idea what God is, and I'm not feeling an awe for God. I'm actually feeling an awe for the world and then understanding that God is the creator of the world. But that is the lower level of awe, and that is a necessary prerequisite in order to lead us to learning Torah and doing mitzvahs. Once I learn Torah and I do mitzvahs, what I'm doing when I'm studying Torah and doing a mitzvah is I'm actually connecting to a level of godliness which is above and beyond worlds. Because after all, the Torah is the source of the worlds. And that gives me a little the ability to appreciate not God for creation, but God for who he himself is. And feel that incredible awe and insignificance in the face of God himself. That is the higher level of awe. That is Yira Elah. So again, we start with the lower level of awe, which is looking around at the creation and seeing the greatness of God from that. That leads me to studying Torah, doing mitzvahs, and once I have both of those complete, I have the lower level of awe, and I'm studying Torah and doing mitzvahs, now I'm able to have the higher level of awe, the highest level of awe, which is just God himself, feeling myself in the presence of God and my utter insignificance in God's presence and therefore the incredible awe that I experience as a result of that. With that, we've concluded the conversation about Yira Sashem, about awe, and now for the next quite, quite a few chapters, we'll be transitioning to talking about love of God and how to attain that positive emotional connection with God.